This is the EGC 20k Age of Empires 4 tournament. The semi-finals are on, only four generals still standing, and a new war begins. And we reveal Zaustakas and Nuki. You've joined for the first match between two absolute titans. Well, not really. They're not titans. Let me tell you what they really are. Settling in the west in blue coat of arms and blue gene of legs. Leading the Mongols is the Viper. Should they travel to the east, they will meet a literal alliteration. Three cheers for the Red Roos Recon. Truly a heroic name. We are closing in to the end to find out who is the first ever Age of Empires 4 Champion. If you are just joining us for whatever reason, uh, you can watch all the matches from the final 16 here on this channel. And they are all completely ad-free. At least they're supposed to be. I don't want your money. All I need is a cup of hot tea, some shortcake dunkable biscuits, and someone to tell me that everything is going to be okay. So let's get down to this. These are the maps for the best of five. We are on the map Lippany, my favorite of all of the maps. It has a few cliffs, not many, and a big patch of stealth forest in the middle. Now under the circumstances, none of this is really too important. The Viper already denying the bounty that the Roos would be claiming. I will give them some shortfall in economic power going into the feudal age. Of course, Roos can benefit by putting hunting cabins in the stealth forest to generate gold, but no one in their right mind will really put them alongside a well-traveled path. But there are a few blots of stealth forest along the edges that you could hide hunting cabins in. Uh, and. By the way, this is not a matchup we usually see, and even more uncommon in the first match of this best of five. The Mongols can be quite direct, looking to be the first to lay an offensive down. And the Rus, however, is approached with more versatility. We've seen them take the initiative. We've seen them want to build up their castle age comforts. In this case, though, they're probably not going to have the time for such comforts. Uh, what will come in handy for Recon is those early knights, a heavy armored horsey unit, which will shrug off volleys of arrows and excel against any cavalry the Viper can field. But here's the thing, and if we pull up the Civilization Overview for some extra information, one of the biggest things Mongols have going for them here is that double unit production. Uh, from the stone resource, which they can't make use of because they can't make walls. Oh, this is why I like Lippany. Spots like this where I just want to see a tower planted on it, laying claim to some of the realm. Uh, so anyway, this double unit production for the Mongols has proven an invaluable mechanism when against France, which we commonly see. Uh, they have heavy knights in the feudal age, and there's no reason why that same strategy would not apply here against the Rus as well. Of course, you can also use the stone to get better technologies for both your economy and military, but commanders are certainly favoring the double unit production. Now, this is different. Recon's protecting their golden statue with a Kremlin being built in the background. That's their first landmark choice. It's not just an extra layer of firepower. It's got eight slots for cowards and provides the influence bonus for Roos. Basically, lumber camps and town centers near this uh, will have an extra 20% wood when they deposit the resource at that building. Uh, so attacking early is going to be difficult for Viper with that building situated close to the town center. Though, one other way to look at this is great! My opponent fears me. They fear that I will strike soon. I can use this time to focus on the macro element. 
Recon taken a peep and viper settlement. The Uvu right in view. How do you do? Said the horse to the Uvu. And the Uvu <laughs> said back, Screw you. Screw you. And the horse with the Drew. The gold, on the other hand, tells us that the Viper is probably going to get some economic technologies. Possibly a wheelbarrow. They just don't have too much reason for gold elsewhere. The wheelbarrow upgrade is a, a great, fantastic choice when you've got at least 20 villagers. I think that's what the, the math came out at. Uh, it mostly affects villagers who do a lot of walking, and that mainly is woodcutters. This kind of makes sense. The Viper is probably going to be wanting a lot of wood for spearmen, uh, if Recon is bringing early knights, and also more wood for archers, because someone needs to protect their spearmen. Very angry Khan wants to get rid of the scout, but it's going to take a long time. Uh, spearmen usually come under fire from archers, since that's their hard counter, and most commanders prefer fighting ranged micro battles instead of trying to utilize light cavalry, which I completely agree with. Uh, as mentioned, this is the game on release. There's no balance patch to arrive yet. And I think light cavalry are in a weaker position than they should be. Light cavalry... Uh, their main difficulty is that they are under fire before they get in range of the archers, and they just aren't armored enough to take that kind of punishment. Now, that doesn't mean don't get light cavalry. It's still good, but you've got to be smart with using them, and having to be smart to get value out of something is a disadvantage. And throughout the history of games, the majority of players take the easiest road to victory. Not me, I like a challenge. Uh, anyway, we got the Deer Stones up. The Viper now gets access to the Am Network. Uh, check it in with Recon. They do have stables. I spotted a single knight. There's also these hunting cabins along the northeastern border. These will generate a little bit of gold over time based on the amount of trees near them. Another one's going to be built next to the neutral marketplace. This one's at uh, 15 gold a minute. That'll give you an idea of just how decent the resources are early on a scout spotting some movement from recon heading up to his settlement dies in the stealth forest but they do fire the signal flare at least not the Khan signal flare just a, a meager one that lets everyone know or at least four spearmen know where to go recon changing their attack direction and there's a second town center for Viper. Recon's not going to attack after all. I think that is sensible. Uh, the Mongol town center costs 900 wood. Normal town centers usually cost some stone and a lot less wood. Uh, they're going to place it kind of around this choke point. And I would love to see a tower up upon this hill. It's a great place for a town center because no army really wants to go through a choke point and pass by a building that could be garrisoned by a load of villagers and immediately start firing arrows. Recon, as you can see, already limited by their choice. They're gonna have to just loiter around in the stealth forest until more units arrive. Then perhaps they can make a dent somewhere. Viper, why did you not put that tower on the hill? Oh, tease me. Viper, though, is in an excellent position. This bodes extremely well for their prosperity in the region. The Mongolian Turk will be up against the Russian ruble. So if you're looking to buy and sell, now is a good time to do so. They might just be able to price their opponent out of the area. Build some very nice expensive houses. Demolish recon settlement. Stick them all there. Not sure what this guy was trying to do dies in a bush somewhere. Is that how you want it to go? This tower still bothers me. I want a website called RaidMyTower.com. This would score very low, but if we moved it over here, I'm going to think a thousand years in the future. It would make a very nice bed and breakfast location with historic value. Recon getting spotted by the Khan. You can't hide from him. By the way, it would have also been good just to get this tower a little closer to the stealth forest, just to uncover more of the fog of war. I think that's what the Viper was going for. 
And I think it works okay. More villager space. I wonder if Recon is getting fixated on this giant patch of stealth, though. They could have a much wider maneuver pattern and get behind Viper. What they are doing instead is going to bring some more units along. There's a blacksmith down. Early siege technology almost complete. But even with a battering ram, I think Viper is well protected. Well, I wouldn't say well. Except I did say it three times. I would say adequate. There's a good enough amount of defense between the town centers, the tower, and the spearmen, and the positioning of those things. Unless we can attack the rear, but trying to attack the rear with a battering ram, that's a slow plan of action. The slower it takes to do something, the more time there is to respond. Slow is not a good strategy right now. I think Recon agrees that second town center pumping out villagers is cause for concern. And that concern might be alleviated if they can get their mitts on this big wooden town center. Two outposts now and a load of archers. I'm not saying Recon can't do any damage here, but hell, the Viper wouldn't want this any other way. This is the Viper's preferred fight. This isn't just some fancy logging mill. This is a military camp. This is their second town center. Even with the destruction of that tower. And the fight still going on here. The first town center is still happy, hard at work. Losing a hundred wood for a tower ain't a big deal if you've got villagers in indentured servitude in the bucket loads. And some of those villagers died trying to torch the battering ram, but we've got villager dispensing machines. Viper will get those few losses replaced in no time at all. No trouble at all. It's a good attack for recon, though. Tactically, fine did more damage, took less losses. There's no issue with the tactic of this engagement. It's the strategy that's the problem here. They are at a strategical disadvantage. Viper doesn't have to fight as hard. Hell, they could stick their archers up here and the cavalry, they can't Skyrim it up the cliff. They'd have to go around and through the spears. Or I suppose they could go around this way too, but with a few wooden posts, or even a wall section, you could barricade this bit off. This is what I mean by not needing to play as smart. Why do all of this? Why go the extra mile when what you have is good enough? Why do all these little things when you can just outpower your enemy through economy? Viper can afford all of those losses accrued. Recon, on the other hand, they have not reached that second tier Roost Bounty. Uh, they don't have a second town center. And they went for the Kremlin, anticipating an early attack. Which means they don't have the Golden Gate. Viper just reaching outside of their borders. It's an unfortunate time for Recon. Because they're about to upscale this offense by sticking a wooden tower in the forest. The armies clash, vipers, spears at the ready! Spiking the knights, Recon's archers knocked arrows into the spearmen. And the battering rams can't retreat fast enough. Only a few spearmen remain. Will they have enough torch damage between them? They probably will. There's more knights here. And those knights have got to find a way around the spearmen. How's that wooden outpost? Looks like it is under construction. Viper also plunking one down next to the stone and just beyond the stealth forest for themselves. It's true Zerg creep strategy. Remember, these towers give the Yam Network movement speed bonus for infantry. Recon in force dissuades that build. Viper instead tries one in the forest. That's going to take 45 seconds to build. I don't think they've got 45 seconds. Recon's tower is completed. Very valuable map information revealed. Starting to look like a nice little habitat for Recon. Viper also has three sheep recruitment centers. Despicably delicious. 
Viper has built this area of knowing it would be attacked again. Here it comes. Keeping the work close to the town center so that the villagers can hop in to defend as required. The pasture is going to pack up and move. You can actually rally sheep from the pastures to a different location. Useful to know. Another tower is demolished. Recon is moving on to Bludgeon in the town center. The Uvu depleting at an awkward moment. The Khan leads from the front, struck with arrows, but not before giving the order to fire faster, you fools! Fire faster! The spearmen are not working in unison. Command is failing. Viper has more archers, though, and that's important. Villagers dealing with the battering ram. The knights will cut their way through the spears and move towards the archers. The Viper's attrition is on display. Their archer division is absolutely fine. The spearmen got disembodied, though. How many villagers have fell at the hands of Recon? Hang on a minute. There's a freaking other town center over here. The sneaky little Viper. Unfortunately, I don't think there's Recon can do too much after discovering it. Unless they bring a battering ram over, but then I think it might just unpack and scoot away. They need cavalry to chase it down. All that takes time to do. Is it worth taking the time to stop 10 villagers harvesting food? Is it going to be a bigger problem in five minutes' time? Is this all spiraling out of control? Recon moves in. Third strike. That town center is under half health. Spare division. Moving to engage the cavalry viper being pushed back again. The spears fall in battle. Plenty of cavalry remain. It might be a hard counter, but don't discount the numerical advantage that viper has. There's just so many archers that they're able to volley down the knights. Recon is also lacking in archers. The knights and archers would need to work together to defeat Viper's archer organization. The town center might be on fire, might not be. It can't quite decide. Usually, and I've said this plenty before, you might remember me saying, if you are always defending, you aren't winning. Now, I'm not saying the Viper is winning here. What I am saying is this resembles throwing pudding at a brick wall. Recon has scraped some of the pudding off. We'll reshape it into a new pudding and throw it at the wall again. There's always exceptions, which is an ironic contradictory statement because the exception to always being exception. You know, you know what? Let's not get into that right now. Viper looks upon the wooden outpost. A little wooden effigy for burning a prize to mark this momentous, successful, defensive occasion. And they're going to get their own tower there as well. That's still far as sure is shrinking. We've got farms down here for recon. It's a quite the bustling town, complete with a marketplace and an expedition is upon these villagers. They're going to go over to the berries. Viper could be making their first assault soon. Recon gathering up their defenses. Couple houses, another lodge at the berries to help ease the transition into getting farms. Wow! Look at this! They are so fast! Another outpost that enrages me! There's such a godlike cliff for an outpost here. Please acknowledge them! In any case... The Viper is descending upon Recon Settlement with considerable numbers. What they lack, though, is the tools. Manpower they have, but they need machine power or firepower. That is literal power in the form of the element fire. The Spearmen won't be a good source of fire, I'm afraid, because they will have other duties integral to keeping the archers alive, and it is the archers which are keeping the Viper in the game. So they'll move around the eastern outskirts, burning whatever houses get in their way. Oh, it feels like we haven't seen some good harass in a while. What can they get? Maybe Chono the villager here, pondering life without stone? What is a rock if not just a small boulder? 
think on all wise Jono. Oh, oh, we have a double age up at the same time. Everyone gets to the castle age. Steps were down for the extra gold for Viper and the Abbey of Trinity for Recon. Basically a glorified monastery with some specific unique monastery technologies. Uh, you can also train the warrior monk from there, which we usually see happen. They improve the combat capabilities of nearby units when they strike a foe. In goes a big cavalry charge straight into the archers. Viper took their attention away for a moment. The spearmen late to battle. Those spearmen will be allowed to get into melee. They hold a spear wall formation. Arrows are flung over the top. There is no real focus on the fire. The Viper would benefit from focusing the archers. They are now. But it's all too late, I'm afraid. This army, I will declare, vanquished. <laughs> <laughs> we are to test the Viper's economy. How fast can they reassemble an army and what can they field? More spears and archers. That's old stuff. We've got castle age stuff now. And men at arms would not go amiss. Yes, we do have a couple escorted by many, many spears. Recon won't even get some respite, it seems. The Viper sending these units to attack Recon's gold workers. And Recon is ready. They were so clairvoyant in moving their troops here. Getting a few extra soldiers in the back and championing another battering ram so they can shove it into that tower. The Khan is organizing the small defense. Oh, getting a little too close for my liking. Shoots the flare that grants armor for five seconds. It's not a lot given the circumstances, but you know, it's something. The gold workers entirely safe from the poor swarmed men at arms. They can kick back, relax, chill out, and make Recon filthy rich. Oh, he likes the money. And the relics. That'll be a hundred extra gold a minute if they deposit it in their local tax-breakingly free monastery. We haven't seen any relic conversions yet, and I don't think players of this caliber would ever truly fall for such a trick. The Viper sending three crossbow tiers. I think they've wildly overestimated their capabilities. Recon advancing to the exact same location as before. They are Duck on trying to level this particular area to the ground. Two knights spending some quality time together on their holidays away from the war. And I know this looks terrifying, but I'm going to open the income per minute. Yeah, as I thought, Viper has a staggeringly good economy still, a bit lower on gold, but that's most likely because they moved their steps redoubt a minute ago. So a temporary halt in gold. Otherwise, it wouldn't make sense. They've got 13 villagers gathering gold into a Steps Redoubt. You would be making more than 100 gold per minute on that for sure. And clearly, Viper can use all of these resources. They aren't floating huge sums. Units are out on the field, and it's a mixed composition too. Recon is going to struggle to fight this one. Holiday Knights... Oh, we have discovered the gold mine. That's excellent. Uh, lone man at arms visiting the Abbey of Trinity. But let's keep our eyes tuned to the big battle. Recon's loyal Knight Brigade takes the brunt of Viper's frontline foot soldiers and a barrage of crossbow bolts. And with the first clatter of metal and metal, I think Recon knows it. The addition of crossbows and men-at-arms from the Castle Age is overbearing for their army, comprised mostly of archers. Recon is kiting, trying to only have to deal with the melee infantry for now. That would be ideal. More ranged units and the Khan appear. Kiting did a whole lot of good, but still... Viper is chucking more units into this battle. The eagle went up, but the vision they provide is only the same as the Khan. Now you can see that reinforcements difference in power. 
as more units flow into the battlefield for Viper's cause. Farms might be exposed here. Viper looking to do some villager damage. Panic setting in for recon. Everyone's getting sweaty palms. What's that in the distance? It's a Manganel. Viper is going to be hit in the ranged composition. It dealt pretty good damage. Viper beelines for it. Might have been no kills, but it's going to set up some kills. Provided that Recon can get past the last couple of men-at-arms. Some folks having their own fun to the north of Recon's village. Viper even got an outpost up here for more Yam Network. The troops won't be running out of breath, running such a grand distance to get here. The last assortment of troops should wrap the remnants of Recon's defendants. I'm not seeing many red production buildings or new units arriving. That's because the white flag has been raised. The Rus has been defeated. Victory goes to the Viper. What a fantastic first match between our two mortals that most resemble titans. I can't wait to go again, can you? It was so good, I forgot to mention. Check the video description for more about the EGC tournament stuff that's going on as a weekly event. Uh, you can also check out more Ironcast productions. We love Age of Empires 4, and we love RTS, and most of all, we love you to the amount of what is legally allowed in your location. This isn't the end, it's just the beginning. Let's go to the second match in this best of five. My name's Anuki, I'll see you soon.